Let's talk about the SAP Kima Runtime. Hi, I'm Ian Thane. Welcome to another SAP Code Talk. And I really am pleased to have yet another new person on Code Talk, Jamie Cawley. Jamie, thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. Excellent. So, as I always do with my first timers, could you introduce yourself to the Code Talk audience? Sure. So, as you mentioned, my name is Jamie Cawley, and I'm uh, part of the product management team for uh, Kima, which is part of our uh, BTP runtimes and core uh, teams. You are a regular, or at least once, I remember, to uh, my colleague uh, Josh Bentley on his blue beard. Uh, blue talk. beard, yes. So, yeah, I've, been, I've done. I've done a couple of them with him. I think two, and he well, lives close close well, to me, so we have some. Uh, excellent. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, so, yep. as I mentioned in our intro, Jamie, what gives uh, like the level? Let us level that playing field. What is the SAP Kima runtime? Sure. So we do. You know, when we're talking about runtimes in SAP, we have a couple of different uh, options. So just to kind of get the whole picture here of where Kima fits, we also have an ABAP runtime where you can run ABAP code, and we have a Cloud Foundry runtime. We have the Neo runtime and the serverless runtime. So these are the different options of where you can run uh, applications. And, and the Kima runtime is our Kubernetes uh, offering that we have. So. The whole idea of it is that, you know, if you look at a vanilla uh, Kubernetes cluster, a lot of that, after you install Kubernetes, there's a lot of other pieces that you have to choose uh, to, to use and set up to really, you know, take full use of the uh, Kubernetes offering itself. So Keem is kind of our uh, collection of tools that we put together to help accelerate uh, your development and stuff. So you don't have to worry about putting you know, service meshes and all these different components together. So some of the, the uh, pieces that come with Kima is, you know, I'll just mention a couple of them. So the first being is the API gateway. So that's what allows you to expose any, any uh, workloads that you have running in the cluster. You can expose them to the internet using the API gateway. And that comes with things like a, a wall server so you can protect APIs. I can also use, uh, you can also use uh, JOT tokens or JSON web tokens to, to protect uh, APIs. And it has things like uh, you can do it on different paths of services and you can block certain HTTP methods. So there's a lot that you can do there. But also within Kima, we have an event mesh. So we can consume events coming from uh, other cloud systems. And you can use them to kick off uh, workloads. So if you have a, a serverless function running or you have just uh, some microservices running in there, they can all subscribe to a, events to kick off some, some process to take place. And as I mentioned too, we have a serverless engine inside of the Kima runtime. And with that, you can do uh, Node.js application development or Python. And we have a, an editor inside of a, a, the web console of Kima, and you can also tie that to like a Git repository if you wanted to develop those uh, serverless functions outside of uh, the, the Kima UI itself. And I mentioned we have a service mesh so that's uh, Istio, so that's fully configured for you. So all your, your workloads communicate uh, securely and you can do various uh, tasks with the, the service mesh itself. And we, you know, Things we also have things such such as uh, monitoring and logging tools, and of course it comes with uh, SAP support. So we you, we manage that cluster for you. So we update the Kima components for you, and we update Kubernetes and stuff for you. Oh, okay. I've got a double barrel question for you now, if you don't mind me. I'm going to come up come at you full on there, uh, which is um, why would you use or what would you use Kima for, and how does it compare to Cloud Foundry? Sure, sure. Good question. So as I mentioned in Kima, you have an event mesh so you, you can subscribe to events. So, you know, one path you can take is building extensions to other cloud applications that publish events. So using them, you can build in a, 
what we call the side-by-side -side extension to, to push your extension outside of that cloud application itself and have it hosted inside your Kima runtime. Mm -hmm. And otherwise you could build APIs, you know, both, both save side by side. And, you know, so there's an extension path and then there's just the building an application. Inside of Kima, you have, you're running on, you're basically running on virtual machines. Mm -hmm. And because it's Kubernetes, it, you, it will scale up and down. You can control how that works and have it automate it for you. So you can build very, uh, or highly scalable applica uh, applications. So, you know, really big workloads and your your single Kima runtime can scale up to like 40 virtual machines or, or whatever. So you can get like a very large application running in there. And of course you have a, the serverless runtime. So if you want to prototype stuff quickly, you have that or just very small things to, to run in there. And when, it, when you compare it to Cloud Foundry, uh, so, you know, as I mentioned, it's Kubernetes. So Kubernetes gives you a very, very granular configura uh, configuration options. So you can really control how a lot of the automation of scaling works and, and you know, all kinds of different aspects. So you get a lot of control over how that works. Where in terms of Cloud Foundry, a lot of that stuff is taken care of for you. And it's not something that you can really control yourself. Uh, another great thing with Kima is you can do like hot deployments. So you can have code running in, in production and push up another version of it. Mm. And uh, the cluster will start bringing down the old uh, versions of that as it's bringing up the new one. So you as a user don't even know that's happening. So that's another great thing. And you know, it's similar to that. You can do like the blue green deployments where you have different versions of applications running in the cluster. And you could use something like a header or something to force, or like an IP range or something like that, where you could force certain uh, segments of your users to go to a different version of that application. And Kima also allows you to store information into it so you can persist, uh, uh, persist information. So we have in Kubernetes, you call them a, a volume claim. So you can create this uh, disk access and have uh, not only stateless applications, but stateful applications too. So you can run databases in there if you wanted to, or just like you know, persistence for like caching of data just to accelerate what uh, your workload is doing, just to make it quicker. And you know, it's it's you know, as I mentioned, it's all microservice based, so it supports things like gRPC, which is a, a binary protocol mm -hmm. that you can use, kind of similar to REST, but it's binary where you have uh, like a spec document that relates to that. So that's that's very efficient too. So you do have in, in cluster networking. So any workload running in the cluster can talk to each other without ever going outside of it. Cool, okay. Well, I've got to bring up the open source question, which is how does Kima runtime differ from an open source version of Kima or the open source version of Kima? Yeah, so it's, it's the exact same code line. So our developers are, are working on both of them or, or working on you know what we have as open source. It's the same code that we're putting on as uh, SAP. So we just have like a, a certain profile that we use when someone provisions it, which you know that profile may differ a little bit with how we have it set up. Mm -hmm. And but the, the real the real big differences are in when you're using the SAP version of it you have all the tie-ins to the, uh, the BTP services. So you get a service, uh, service catalog has those SAP services uh, existing there where you, in the open source version, you wouldn't have any of that SAP uh, related stuff in there. And also you get support by SAP. So open source, you kind of have to support it yourself. Cool, okay. Now, uh, as, it's been a great sort of set of answers you've given us, but if I was a co-talk audience member watching this and I wanted to find out more, I wanted to know the skills required, where would I go to? Well, probably the best place to find skills. Yeah. Some, you know, some of it's just like the Kubernetes world. So getting familiar with uh, Kubernetes, getting familiar with Docker. So there's different tutorials you could find uh, you know, on the inter internet for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we also have in our developers uh, 
.sap.com, we have a set of tutorials. So we have two different missions. We have a beginning, a beginner mission, which kind of gives you an overview of how to use Kima when you're looking at it, a, you know, in the console UI application. So the, mm -hmm. the web application that Kima comes with. Yeah. And then the intermediate one kind of teaches you to use, there's a, a command line tool called uh, Cube Cuddle or Cube CTL, whatever you want to call it. And the intermediate one kind of focuses on using the command line to control the what you know what you're doing in in Kima there to kind of give you different views of you know the same world here. Excellent. Well, should have known it's the tutorial navigator on developers at sap.com. Should have yep. known it. Yep. Jamie, <laughs> it's been it's been fantastic hanging out with you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And I'm sure I'll have you back in the future, delve a little bit deeper into the Kima world. Yeah, thank you for having me.